You're a choice away from a new beginning. Your life, where it is right now, is just a reflection of the choices that you made. You're a choice away from a new beginning. And a commitment away from a new life. You're a choice away from a new beginning, a commitment away from a new life. Choice is great. It's awesome. But the thing that I see is that a lot of us, we don't stay committed to our choice. I know Ed lit you on fire. I know Jamie lit you on fire. I know Trucks lit you on fire. I know Brennan's been lighting you on fire. And uh, Lori that's coming and and Mel that's coming is going to light you on fire. But at the end of the day, what kind of commitment are you going to have to stay loyal to what you said you were going to do once you leave here? Because let's be real, we're in a room right now, and you need to stay in these type of rooms where the environment is great, the group is great, but you're going to go back to real life. You're going to go back to your social media, and people are going to call you crazy for even being here, or you're going to tell your family members how excited you are, and they're not going to be as excited for you. Real life is going to punch you right right back in the face, and my question is, how are you going to still stand up against that? When your back's against the wall, are you going to fold, or are you going to stay there and fight back for your life? I hear you, and I love that, but I want you to make it real, because when life gets real, you're going to see if it's real for you, and the thing that I see so much, and I'm just following my heart right now, here I go, the thing that I see so much is that when it gets real, I see so many people retreat from the things that they said they wanted to do. They retreat. Every single time failure shows up, oh my gosh, it's not for me, retreat. Opinions get put on our life. Retreat, and let me just tell you this. Please stop taking people's opinions with no solutions as facts. Please consider the source. It's so funny that they didn't create you, but they're trying to control you. And what a lot of us do, I've been guilty of it too. We give too much power to people's opinions. They're just opinions. It's just their perspective of life. We give too much power to what people think about us. We give too much power of people's perception on us. It's their perception. What God has for you has nothing to do with them. Because because truth is, I wouldn't be on this stage right now if I would have believed opinions. Because people tell me, Trent, your past is too bad. You don't like to talk anyway. You're an introvert. This is not for you. (laughs) Seriously, I am an introvert. Y'all like, yeah, right, right. Ser- it, literally, my friends still can't believe that I speak on stages. Like, they're like, that's crazy. Trent wouldn't say two words to people. <laughs> say, wow, and even stand up. How do you walk into your biggest fear? You know why? Because this is, this is real for me. Some of y'all know my story, but I'll just say this. I don't want to take too much on my story, but it's real for me. And we hear the word why. I like to say deep-rooted reason. I think Jamie talked about the why yesterday that I saw on social media. Deep-rooted reason, get clear on that. My reason is that my best friend committed suicide in 2011. I never wanted to be a speaker. I never wanted to be any of this. Personal development was Lil Wayne to me or something like that. That's it. (laughs) That was it for me. But I realized that my promise, my, man, I hate the word promise because promises with words. My commitment with action to my friend in this cask. And I said, I'm going to live the rest of my life doing these hard things, stepping into fear. So I want to tell you, if you're feeling fear, this is just a simple thing that I want to tell you. When the mission is strong enough, the fear will never be great enough. When the vision is strong enough, whatever else will never be great enough. And some of us, we're retreating every time we have fear. So I just want to ask you, is it strong enough for you? And if fear is controlling you, I'm telling you right now, you haven't realized how deep it is. A lot of us, we have these external things. Oh, I want to be the number one speaker. I want to be this. I want to be that. That's cool. But it has to be deeper than that. Because when those things show up, because they will. When the money shows up, when the followers show up, because they will. Because you guys are incredible. Are you still going to show up? I've been doing this for 14 years, not to, because I reached all my goals. But it was a commitment that I made, staying loyal to what I said I was going to do long after the mood I said in this left. That's what commitment is. So my question, I asked a lot of questions to y'all. This is about y'all. My, my question to each and every one of you, are you committed or are you interested? Hey, and it's cool to be interested. It's cool. I understand. Maybe you walk in here and say, who's this Brendan Bouchard guy that comes out to Macklemore and, and, you know what I mean, dances? Right? Who's, who, who are these people? And maybe you come here and just been interested, and that's awesome, but 
Interested is not enough. The people that I know have been interested in things, whether it be NFL players that I saw, usually don't stick with it. But the people that I know that says, you know what, I'm committed. I don't care what shows up. My, my, my commitment is controlled by circumstance. My commitment is controlled by fair. I'm going to keep showing up no matter what because I signed up for this forever. Those are the people that find a way. Trent is no way. Those are the people that make a way. So are you committed or are you interested? That's the question. Let me get to this real quick. You're a choice away from a new beginning, a commitment away from a new life. I got to ask you this question as I ask myself this, and I want to dive in deep on this. Your perspective can either be one or two things. Is your perspective your prison or your power? Perspective is what you can control. Nobody got nothing to do with that. How you see the world, some of y'all be like, trench shoes are so cool. Some of y'all be like, trench shoes are ugly right now, right? Y'all both right? It's your perspective. Your perspective is usually shaped around your past experience that controls it. But you might say, Trent, what is a prison perspective? A prison perspective is if you're in this room and I feel for you, because I used to use this excuse all the time, easier said than done. Oh, I hear you, Brendan. I hear you, Trucks. I hear you, Ed. I hear you, Jim. But you don't understand. That's easier said than done. I'm like, duh, everything is. Flying here was easier said than done, but you got on the plane and did it. Brushing your teeth, but you did it. That's a prison perspective, always trying to find a reason to justify where you're choosing to stay at in your life. Prison perspective, and 80% of people live here. I'll probably say 90% of people live here. Easier said than done. But then there's the power perspective. And the power perspective simply says this. Listen, it is easier said than done, but I don't care how hard it may seem, how impossible it may be, it may be. I'm going to get it done because there's somebody in my life, and family is, 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 is one, but there's people in your life that you haven't even met yet that are depending on you to walk into your gift. You see, we look at life from this peripheral, but just the people around us, man, I would have never met the millions of people in life. I would have never walked into my gift, and each and every one of you have a gift, and I know that sounds so motivational, but this is real. You have a gift. Every single one of you, your gift might not be to be a speaker. But you have a gift, a talent inside you. But a lot of us, we can have prison perspective and say, oh, my gift isn't good enough. I'm not like them. I'm not like Trent. I'm not like Ed if you want to be a speaker. I'm not like Brendan. All these people, that's cool. You're not supposed to be. Because I'll tell you right now, and this might seem very arrogant, but it's not. Can't nobody do Trent Shelton like Trent Shelton. Can nobody do you? Can nobody do you like you? And a lot of us, what we do is we allow social media to conform us to be a second version of someone else instead of being the original. You custom made, my friend. Just like you treat that treat that Louis purse, right? Those shoes that are one on one. You show the world to that. Oh, I got my one on one. Ain't nobody got this bag. Ain't nobody got this car. And you show it off to the world, but when it comes to yourself and you are custom made, you don't show you off to the world. You leave that gift wrapped up inside of you. Birthdays, you're showing your gift. Christmas, you're showing your gift. Mother's Day, all the days. It's my birthday month for women, right? Y'all celebrate the whole month, right? You're showing your gift. Trust me, I know Maria be like, I want 30 gifts this month right now. <laughs> but you're showing your gift off to the world. But when it comes to these, these emotional, spiritual gifts that you've been given, you've left them wrapped up. Please, give your gift to the world. What are you waiting on? A lot of us, we disrespect time, and I'm talking, I'm not exempt from this. We disrespect time as if we have forever. My friend, I want to tell you this, and this, I mean this sincerely. Y'all know the years that I, what I've been through recently. Forever has your expiration date. You don't have forever. You got right now. But Trent, I'm not ready. You'll never be ready. And I'm going to tell you right now, the world won't be ready for you. But <laughs> if I'm you, I'm going to be. Y'all better get ready. Perspective is your power or your prison. 
Write these three things down. I'll say it slow. Life is not about what happens to you. Ha. Huh. Life is not about what happens to you. It's about the meaning you give to what happens to you. I'm going to repeat that. Life is not about what happens to you. It's about the meaning you give to what happens to you. You can't always control the experience, but I promise you, you control the meaning you give to the experience. We just were in Austin last week. Quick story. We were in Austin last week, and my 7 on 7 team with Tristan, my son, that I coach. And we're in this big tournament, and literally, we lose to a team we shouldn't have lost to. Very first game. And my kids, like this generation, like they have one bad play, they heads down, right? And I'm telling my kids, they're expecting to be yelling and, and be angry. I tell my kids, I'm smiling. They're like, they were confused. Like, even Tristan was like, yeah, my, I, I know my dad. Like, he's smiling and we lost. Something ain't right. <laughs> and I said, you know why I'm smiling, y'all? I said, it was the first game in the tournament. I said, this loss is going to make us champions. They looked at me and said, how? I said, because of this loss, we're going to wake up. We're going to attack this with a whole new mentality. And this loss will be our biggest win that won't show in the win column. I said, just use it. I said, what is this going to mean? And I said, this is going to mean we're going to win the championship when we leave here. Make a long story short, we won the championship, the best team in Texas, we won it because of that loss. Because of that loss. The meaning you give things. And I want to tie this simple shift to shift your perspective from your prison to your power. This might go over your head a little bit, and it's so simple, but it changed my life. When things happen to us, the first thing that we do is we say, what does this mean? And our human self finds the logical reason. When I tore my Achilles, I'm like, man, I'm not going to be able to run for, still can't run, for a year. This means that, man, I'm going to have so much stress because I can't go on my nature runs. I can't be active. When I lost my mom, this means that, man, I'm not going to have my protector ever again. And I went to that. And then I asked myself this question, how is that meaning serving my life? How is that meaning serving my soul? How is that meaning helping me elevate beyond? How is that meaning helping me get the, the best out of this situation? So I added a few words to that. I stopped saying, what does this mean? And I started saying, what is this going to mean? Oh, uh, that went over y'all's head. Okay, let me, let me try this again. I stopped saying, what does this mean? And I started saying, what is this going to mean? <laughs> Don't be cheering to make me feel good. I hope y'all get that. But seriously, though, what is this going to mean? So when I lost my mother, I changed it, man. I, this is going to mean I got a protector that's always with me. She gets to watch every event now that she always wanted to do. It's going to make sure I, I appreciate time with my family more. This Achilles is going to mean I'm going to sit down and I'm going to better my craft more than ever. When you say what is this going to mean, you take the power out of the situation and you put the power into your hands. Did y'all feel that? Say straight up. Life is not about what happens to you. It's about how you respond to what happens to you. So when you leave here and you might go do your first live on Instagram and one person show up, how are you going to respond? When you leave here and you start executing things in your business and it's not the overnight success that a lot of us think because we don't have delayed gratification and gratification at all, and it doesn't take off and things start to go wrong, how are you going to respond? When life hits you, blow after blow, Blow after blow when you leave here and it's like, man, this is the greatest time of my life. And then you go through a season of hurt. You go through a season of pain. You go through a season, I like to say, of growth. How are you going to respond? The people that I know that live a legendary life, create legendary things, and actually live in greatness, they already know how they're going to respond when whenever it shows up. Power perspective. Life is not about what happens to you. It's about how you use what happens to you. This is the last one of the three. How you use what happens to you. I 
I don't know if I should say this, but I'm going to say it. How can I make this in a nice way? <laughs> no, no, I got you. I'm going to say it. I'm going to be straight up with y'all. But I don't want y'all to take this wrong, but I, I want to say this. Some of us in here, and I see this online a lot, maybe, none of y'all in here, y'all all are excellent. People, <laughs> people online, I see this a lot, and I, and I tell people I coach all the time, some of us, we're addicted to our sad story. And I just want to say this, I understand it's your story, I get it. I get it, I know you want to share your story, but at some point, you have to retire that story, and you, start, gotta, you, start, you gotta start creating new chapters in your life. My biggest fear was I was going to spend my whole entire life talking to my kids about the NFL and me getting cut. I was so afraid that that was going to be the end of my story. And I was going to live in that moment where, listen, I played for three teams. I got cut nine times, but at least I got to play with Peyton Manning. I was so afraid of that story. So I said, this is not going to be the end of my story. This will be a chapter. And when I say you're a choice away from a new beginning, some of you in here are so afraid to turn the page because I get it, you're afraid of the unknown. But for me, I'm more afraid of staying in a known pain than moving to an unknown peace. Turn the page today, right now, and get more. I'm not telling you to don't tell your story, but, man, you got to understand the world does not, can I, I'm going to say damn, the world does not give a damn about you. And this is just real, like, let, let me work on this right quick. The world, and of course, there's people who care about you in this room, and don't take that out of context, but when I lost my mother, I'm going to tell you this, the bills kept coming. I'm like, please, water bill, can you stop coming? My mom died, right? It kept coming. Social media kept going. The world kept spinning. Time kept ticking. People kept living. It kept going. And I was feeling sorry for myself. Until I realized, like, man, if I don't start doing something with my life and I don't change this perspective from my prison to my power, I'm going to be stuck in this story for the rest of my life. Turn the page. And just because you had some bad chapters doesn't mean your story can't end well. Some of you are so afraid of your past. Go, if you knew my past, you'd be like, Trent is not supposed to be here. Turn the page. Start your new beginning today. You got that? Say yeah. yeah. Say oh yeah. oh yeah. Let's read this one. Your greatness is less about becoming someone Woo. and more about understanding you are someone. Okay? And I know that makes you excited, but the, the thing that I'm seeing so much in this world is we're comparing our lives to everybody else. You think you have to become something to become someone. I'm telling you right now, you already were created a someone, a special someone at that. You know the statistics of you being you. But yet, we're sitting here thinking that we have to become something to be great. For a lot of us in here, our next level is not upward. It's going inward. You think that you need another level to, oh, when I get here, I'll be happy. When I get a million dollars, I'll be fulfilled. When I get a million followers, I'll be great. When I get these things off the ground, I got to tell you this because you know I love to talk about the soul. I got to tell you this. The things that you think that you need, that you think that you're missing, that's not what you're missing. What you're missing is appreciation for your life because I promise you, once you get it, it's something called a donut adaptation. Go look it up. Once you get it, you'll get used to it. And guess what's still there? The things you didn't deal with at rock bottom. So my question to everybody in here, why not you? Why not you, big dog? Why not you, my friend? Why not you? Can somebody tell me? Why not you? But Trent, you don't understand my, my family. Trent, you don't understand what I'm going through. Trent, you don't... Don't you know the things, I think Ed said this yesterday, don't you know the things that you think are disqualifying you actually qualifies you? Let's break it down to common sense. I'm a common sense expert. <laughs> if you were to go hike a trail and you see me in the parking lot, you say, hey, sir. 
You have directional hiking this trail, and I say, listen, I never hiked this trail before a day in my life, but here, I'll draw, I'll draw some up for you. Here's the map. I hope you don't get lost. How many of y'all would actually take the map and go hike the trail based upon that interaction? Raise your hand. You must, you would, why, why would you? Why not? <laughs> Now, if you came to me and I said, hey, I'll hike this trail every single day. Matter of fact, at 6 a.m., there's deers. Matter of fact, watch out because they do have coyotes every now and then. This is Texas, so you better watch out. Make sure you go with somebody. Hey, they got two rocks when you step down. Make sure you don't roll your ankle on there. And listen, when you get to the top, it's going to be a cool breeze. It's going to be blowing at 9 degrees. I mean, nine. Uh, the, the wind's going to be blowing at 9, uh, whatever you call it, velocity, right, whatever. <laughs> right? Now, how many of y'all would take that, take my advice and actually hike that trail, right? Please understand this, and this guy has twofold. Some of us, we take advice from people who have never done it, been it. That's a whole other conversation. But you are the expert, not because of your education, but because of your experience. Why not you. There's three types of people in this world. And I want to talk about these for a moment because I feel like what really changed my life was me being this person. I haven't always been this person. I was actually both of, both of these other things. When I say why not you, that's an invitation to actually Start working on the things, and, and I get it because you guys are in here, but actually start working on the things that you say mean everything to you. And it's just crazy that I see this so much. We have people that say, oh, this means the world to me, means everything to me. But yet we sit and we treat our dreams like a hobby, and then we get mad when that dream gives us hobby results. I don't get it. Some of us go harder for things that don't matter, and we don't go as hard for the things we say we care about and means our life. Which one of these people are you? Number one, you got the watcher. These are the people that literally are online every day, got some strong thumbs, right? They just, right? They scroll all day long. We all been guilty of it. Scroll all day long, they watch. You watch the other person living their greatness, you, can, you sometimes critique their greatness. It's the people at home that's talking about LeBron James is sorry, and they just sit on the couch. It's the critics, it's the commentators that always have something to say because they watch. It's the people that sit in the stands while you play your game of life, and they're always judging your game of life. The watchers. Most of the world are watchers today. They just watch, thinking that something's going to happen. They watch from the sideline, thinking that they're going to walk into greatness. They watch from the sideline, thinking something's going to happen for their life. They watch, thinking they're going to miraculously jump into what God has from their watchers. I made it my mom at five years old that I wasn't going to be a watcher. I told my parents I'm going to make it to the NFL. I'm not cool with just watching Jerry Rice. I want to be Trent Shelton. The ne and I wasn't the next Jerry Rice, by the way. But I had that mentality. The watchers. Second group of people. This, is, this group is very intentional. I love this group. They have all the great intentions in the world. But I want to say, even the greatest intentions with no action is pointless. Intentions do absolutely nothing if you don't have action. This group of people are professional information takers, but no action outputters. Watch all the podcasts, but don't apply anything. All the YouTube, you go to their YouTube uh, catalogs, all the YouTube videos, watch, know every single podcast, everything. The vision board is great. It's amazing. Everything's put together. But they don't take action on their vision. It just sits in the room as a piece of art. I like to call this group the wishers. I wish things could be different. I wish things could get better. I wish there was a change in the government. 
Let me not say that here. I wish, I wish, I wish, I pray. And as a man of faith, I'm going to just say this, and it might sound wrong, but just please listen when I say this. I know we all pray, and praying is great, but I always tell people this. I'm not going to say praying is pointless. It's not pointless. But what you do after you pray shows if you truly believe in what you pray for. You see, faith is in your feet. If you truly believe it, you'll be walking it out. If you truly believe it, I will look at your life and be able to see that you're actually walking the path that you say means everything to you. If you truly believe it. Some of us, we have the best prayers. Incredible prayers. But we sit there and we don't believe in our prayers. We act like, I'm just going to church for a little bit. We act like we don't serve a great God and we sit here and we literally dim down our greatness. We pray for change, but we don't create change. It's on you. There's this God that says it all starts with you. It's on you. And it ends, well, it, some of it ends with you. Because some of you need to stop keeping things in your life that don't serve your life. I might not get too deep in this today. But some of us, we're carrying all these heavy things that we know we need to let go of. We can't let go of it. And we, it's preventing us from actually opening up our soul, opening our life to what's meant for our life. You're carrying all this baggage, trying to go to new destinations. And you wonder why when you get to the new destination, you got the same baggage. Some of us, we're holding on to things that we need to let go of. I'm not talking about people all the time. People always go there. Maybe it's a past. Maybe it's a mindset. Maybe it is people that don't serve your life anymore. And you're so afraid to offend people. It's the wishing. I wish this person could change. Side note. There's no amount of perfection you can provide to someone to make them change. I'm going to stop there because we'll go on a whole other thing. The wisher, last but not least, this is what I hope all of you are, all of you are going to be once growth day is over. It's the worker. Hmm. The person that simply puts in the work. Brick by brick, step by step. Day by day. We're going to talk about consistency in a minute. But it's the person that lives and breathes and breathes consistency. They understand that if I just keep walking the path, then I can, if I just keep showing up one day, my tipping point is going to happen. I didn't know when my videos would go viral. I didn't know when I would be invited to speak on stage, but I kept showing up. I kept believing. I didn't have to get ready to be someone because I already knew I was someone. And all life had to do was catch up to my faith and catch up to my belief. Y'all feel me in the back? Am I, touching your, am I touching your heart a little bit? I know I get, I know, am I, am I making you uncomfortable a little bit? Stepping on some toes, it's okay. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to help change your life. So, and listen, if I get a few unfollows, so be it. But I want you to get this with being a worker. That worker has that faith. Man, when I, I, I got to go back because I want to I wanna get to the point where I first started this because people see it now and they see all the, all the stuff that really to me don't matter anyway, but they see it now. And I'm like, man, if you understood what it took for me to not, to, to actually walk into this, I had to leave something that was comfortable to walk into the uncomfortable because I told myself, I would rather go through temporary moments of, of being uncomfortable so I can walk into more moments of permanent comfortable, uh, comfortable life. Some of us, we're choosing to be comfortable now. And that results to an uncomfortable life. That vision that I had when I first started, I told people I would go speak in Africa. And I know that sounds crazy. What? Africa? You should start in Texas. Maybe Fort Worth first. <laughs> Dallas is about 30 minutes away. Go there. But my heart said Africa, and nothing externally lined up with Africa. Nothing. Except maybe my DNA. Nothing lined up with that. But I had that vision in my soul. I had that hunger in my heart. I had that, oh, man. I had that working mentality. Once I knew this was it for my life, with no external thing, like the NFL didn't put me in position. I didn't have a big homie. I didn't come to conference. I didn't have this. I didn't have somebody put me on stage. I had to pull out my iPhone before it was unpopular and make these videos talking to my iPhone. When people told me, Trent, you shouldn't dress like that on stage, it's not professional enough. I had to believe that I was purposeful enough. (laughs) 
to still be who I am. I had to believe they wouldn't let me in the building. All right, cool. I'll build my own. And I take that personally because that was it for me. I got so many no's when I first started training. You should change this. You should talk like this. You should talk like this person. You should cut your hair. You should hide your tattoos. You do all the things. You should not wear Jordans. All the things. And I said, that's cool. That's you, but I'm going to do me. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. And I hope that y'all get this because I understood what I was fighting for. And some of y'all might not get this, but I got to say this while I'm on stage. And why you, why you, so you can understand why I fight so hard for what I fight for. I love suits. I love all the things, right? I love getting fresh, but I also love being myself and love being comfortable. I told myself that the next time I get on the plane and somebody asks me if I play for an NFL football team, I said, no, I'm going to tell them that I'm an author. I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell you that I'm a speaker because in my community, where I come from, a lot of times it's you're a rapper, you're an entertainer, or you're, or you're a football player. That's it. And I'm going to say this right now because I want you all to feel me. I didn't want to play the game. I wanted to change the game. And listen, I, I know I get to all the claps. I get it. I get it. But it, it, it wasn't easy. I could have took the easy way up. I could have rubbed elbows. I could have faked it till I make it. I could have did all the things, right? But I said, no, I'm fighting for something deeper. I want to go speak to kids, which I still do. I coach kids. And I want kids to see, wow, they actually pay you seven figures to write a book? Oh, my gosh. You can get paid for content creation. You can actually get paid good money to be a speaker. Oh, man, there's something more than the box that they tried to put us in. So some of us in here, we are literally staying in the box that society puts you in. You're a single mom, and it says, oh, this is the only thing that you can do. You're a single father, this is the only thing that you can do. Oh, you come from the hood, this is the only thing that you can do. Oh, you have this type of background, this is the only thing that you can do. Do not let people put you in that box. If they don't want to give you a seat at the table, go find some wood. I'm not a handyman, so I may, I'll put glue together. Glue, write some nails, some hammers, and build your own. If y'all feel that, say straight up. Be a worker. The worker is the person that the watcher watches and the wisher wishes they can be, and the worker just puts his head and her head down and puts in the work. If y'all feel that, say yeah. yeah. Say oh yeah. Y'all oh, yeah. still with me? Yeah. Let's read this one right quick. Success is not solely determined by world-class talent. Rather, it's forged through unwavering commitment to world-class consistency. Can I give you the key? You want the key? All you have to do is be consistent. That's it. Consistency makes you reliable. Consistency makes you a trustworthy person. Consistency makes you the go-to person. I made it in my mind in 2009 that I was going to be the self-worth guy. I want people, they think about self-worth, going through things, or suicide, depression, mental health, go to Trent Shelton. I didn't come with this on and off switch. How many influencers we got in here, our creators? How many of y'all got social media pages? If you don't, you need to use social media. If I go to your page right now, without you saying a word, would I really, could I really tell you what you really are about and what you really believe in? If I went to your page, because some of us, we dibble and dabble in greatness and we expect to be great. You play hokey pokey, right? And you expect to go all in on your greatness, go all in on your gift. When I come to your page, I should be able to tell you that that's who this person is. Go to my page right now. You're going to see what I stand for, what I believe. You can tell me all about me. Some people know more about me than I know about myself. I'm like, how did you know that? Consistency. Consistency makes you legendary. Consistency makes you great. We talk about the word greatness. All greatness is is somebody being consistently great. We don't talk about the person that scored 60 points one time in history. We talk about the person that's continuously did it time after time after time. The person that chooses to be elite 
at what they do. Elite. That's dedicated to mastering their craft and what they do to their approach. If you treat it as such as average, why are you expecting greatness in return? I'm just keeping it a thousand with you. This elite mindset, and, and I talk about this to my kids all the time because, oh my gosh. Please, my friends, stop disrespecting the dream. I tell my young athletes that want to make it to the NFL, they break my heart because I see their work ethic. They don't work. We live in a participation generation anyway. Everybody gets a ribbon, right? You got 98 plates, here's your ribbon. But a lot of us, we disrespect the dream. I have people say, Trent, I want to be a speaker, but yet I tell you to go speak somewhere. I went on street corners because I knew this. Anywhere there was an ear to hear me, I could speak. I didn't, I, I went to schools. Oh, I'm too above elementary schools. I'm not going to elementary. I want the big stages. So I know as a speaker, if you want to hone your speaking craft, go to elementary school. It's the hardest audience you'll ever speak to. <laughs> Facts. They'll let you know you're boring real quick. So write this down, and maybe you're not disrespecting the dream, but be real with you. How am I disrespecting my dream? Because I see so many people that, that want it, but they don't want to do what it takes. I see so many people that want the position, but they don't want the pressure. I see so many people that want the respect, but they don't want the responsibility. I see so many people that want to be elite, but they do, they breathe, and they live average. But yet you want to be elite. Is your service elite? How you treat others, is it elite? How you give to people, is it elite? Is your accountability elite? Is your dependability elite? Can I depend on you? Is your character elite? It's not about skill set all the time. It's about your mindset. Mindset overpowers skill set every single time. Because as you rise to the cream of the crop, everybody got talent. But not everybody got mind. And everybody has heart. You want the elite results, but you don't want to put in the elite work. There's a lot that says you get out what you put in. That's a lie. You get out what you put in over time. Because you can give your all when you leave it today, I promise you, you won't get your all back. But over time, if you keep being consistent, if you keep showing up, if you keep putting in the work, if you don't worry about the followers, you don't worry about the dollars, and you keep making the mission first, the vision first, the dream first, and you lead and you live with service, it takes care of itself. But some of us, we believe our bank account, that that's a predication of who we are. Please, man, and, and I'm taking my time with this because I really want y'all to get this. I see so many people suffer from mental health, so many people commit suicide, so many people depressed because they're literally allowing their worth to be determined by things outside of themselves that they can't control. You're not worthy because of what you have in your bank account. You're not worthy because of a follower or a blue check that you can now buy. You're not worried because of any of that. Worthy. You're worthy because of who you were created to be. So I, I just want you to do this when you get home. Who, what puppet master is pulling the strings on your worth? The things that are controlling how you feel, how people feel about me. Okay, they feel great about me. They love me on social media. Okay, I feel good about myself. Oh, everything is going right in my business. I feel great about myself. But then when things are low, I feel low. Stop giving your worth away. This world cannot give you worth. This world, this world can give you status. But this world cannot give you worth because you were given worth at birth, my friends. And when you truly embrace that, it changes everything. Because you're not living a life, and I'm going to say this, dream chasing, I get, the, I get the mindset, but I don't chase. 
The things that you chase, it means that you ever chase your dog, right? It's running away. Some of us are chasing people, they're running away from our life. And we sit there chasing, you wonder why you're exhausted, you wonder why you're tired. Some things aren't meant for you to catch. So what I would hope for you to do is strengthen, man, strengthen your magnet. That magnet inside of you, some people call it aura, some people call it belief, confidence. When you strengthen this, when you work on this, you don't have to chase anything because the right things find you. I didn't find Brendan. Me and Brendan met because of the thing I can't even explain how it happened. I just kept showing up. I didn't chase opportunities. I didn't chase begging myself to open up certain doors. Sometimes that door is closed for a reason. Sometimes that rejection happens for your protection. Sometimes that no is so powerful because that no is leading you to the right yes for your life. 